Good job, guys. Good job, Joni. High five, Joni. High five, Joni. Damn, earlier than expected, dude. How do you feel? Great, I'm the gentle lucky. Alright. Good, Good job. job. Woo! Woo! <laughs> What about you, Joni? I'm really breaking the fourth wall here. No. Joni! Wow! When I look at Sakatori's story, it seems like he's carrying all this weight around of someone that was never there to begin with. And so it's kind of like this phantom weight that he's self imposing on him. And the course of the movie is designed to relieve him of <laughs> all that weight, you know? Sakatori. Having this be a sequel to another film, I think we established kind of a visual tone with Franco that I was hoping to carry over. But because we're outside of the car and inside of a house, um, the best way to do that seemed to be to carry the Christmas lights vibe over. Um, your daughter up here on the desk. Okay. She's gonna be like sitting right here and you're gonna be like, being in the car was good because we could just pick actors up and zip around, do the scene and then drop them off. Um, but this is a, a different form in a good way. showed it at the film festival at Eastern Hills, the guy commented that it was like a stylish looking film. And I think that we're kind of preserving that same same idea for this one. Especially because after, you know, just the, the like setting in reality, we're gonna go to that like tripping version of the set. And so I think it'll look even better in that light. You tag me in Whoa. the fog. I'm the fog too. I'm just letting you know. Isn't that wild? Okay. Dude, that's the fog. That's the color of the fog. This is like what you can run through. The spectrum will run through the fog and light it up. Nice. Good for the fairy. Describe who your character is. Ooh, good question. <laughs> um, as far as I know, they are like a um, celestial being that I guess presents itself as Sakatori's mm. You're some kind of Fairy thing? No, no, no. Your hallucination brought on by my altar pain, stress. I am Marmak, celestial messenger of Ra, eighth density, occupying the inner ring of Neptune. Inner psyche? Maybe that could be an interpretation. And because it's like a Christmas theme, it's kind of like ghost of Christmas past, present, future, and they're kind of spooky. What keeps a person around someone so toxic and destructive? There's something selfish about it. It gives me a chance to to do what I've always seen. You know, like everyone watches movies, or at least almost everybody. And I've always been like, oh, I wonder if I could do that. Or, I don't know, watching people embody like certain feelings um, and like making the audience feel some type of way um that's really what i want what do you want to say to the future jazz <laughs> jazz <laughs> you were so good <laughs> um and even if you weren't the best fuck it no one else will know so you did a good job we might need some projection though to the way that people are like sharing in the vision with us you know it's not just ours but everybody's and then smile and if I'm standing here you could even sort of like turn around so there's more like light on my face or whatever and, mm. and then that moment can sort of be the focal point of like a 
and then from there I, I amp it up to 10 or whatever you know I love what you're saying it kind of amazes me that people are willing to make an investment in the vision you know a lot of times I, sh- I shared within the script but he doesn't he's not seeing what I'm seeing before it's done and I think that you got to have trust there that you're not just wasting a bunch of time um, that the hours we're putting in are, in the end are going to be edited and you know stitched together in such a way that the story is going to be great so can you describe the character that you're playing you're like the shadow benefactor of the company okay so it's in Derek's name uh, but you kind of set it up and got it moved well see I'm a nice guy um, except that, see, what happened was you were running it, and then once it started to go under, you were like, oh, no, it's your company, it's not mine. Well, I'm not really an actor, but I'm pretending to be an actor playing in a movie. You'll sit in the chair, and Derek's going to talk to you, and then that's, that's it. Okay. What is he going to say? He's going to tell you <laughs> to fuck off. <laughs> in so many ways, he's going to be like, you know, I carry your, this weight around for so long for no reason. I don't need you, and I never did. He's making peace with, uh... <laughs> don't cry, Jeff. Is he a ghost, too? Mm-hmm. Is, so you, is so Derek a, turned into a ghost as well? Is, no, he's the one that's going on the journey. Well, there was something about resurrection or something, so mm-hmm. I didn't quite know what that was. So, I mean, I'm just getting these little bits of stuff, and I'm thinking, what is this going to be? Yeah. So how, how, it's, it's, it's kind of cool that way. Yeah. So actually, an answer to be motivated is not to be motivated and just play it on the fly. This is new to me. Acting is new to me. And okay. it's, uh, like I've always thought that people should have experiences under their belt. And consequently, I have a lot of experiences in my life. And, mm-hmm. uh, right. Interesting chapters like my new chapter of acting in movies. Listen, you and your mom were never left wanting for anything. Oh yeah, thanks so much for what you did for my family. You used to tell him to do the driver transmissions, so he would send the videos to the drivers and say like, your next uh, uh, you know, stop is gonna be, and then tell them where they're going, you know? Okay. And over time, the father insisted that he always use this childish approach to the videos. Oh, okay. So even though he's, you know, <clears throat> in his late twenties or early thirties, he's still doing this marketing uh, gimmick from like way back when he was a kid. Okay. Got it. Cool. It's, it's haunted by your spirit. <laughs> Greetings. Franco. It's the start of your uh, shift, so stay positive, smile, it's gonna be great. You're gonna do great. Uh, your first assignment will be... Okay. Like, working with Derek, I really appreciate his trust his flexibility and his investment. You know, he um, he helped design Sakatori in the first film, and so having his input in a longer form story, it's just really fun to collaborate with him in any way. The Sakatori character comes from the first film, Franco. Where my voice was really high like this. And so we were trying to figure out how Sakatori actually talks, and so I feel like a big part of the character is taking that voice and then lowering it down to this range. And I feel like with this voice, there's sort of a character that emerges. God damn it, I lean! Ah. He's like uneasy, he's anxious, he's sort of confused and lost. But he's a good guy too, you know? He's like, he's just sort of weak and misguided and confused. Um, but I think he's, he's like a nice, likable guy at the same time. He's just in pain. I'm not a perfect man. I know that. But I love my kid. I swear I do. And I don't want to lose her. 
there are these sort of universal themes that run through the movie. So, you know, the painful parts and the struggles that Sakatori goes through, you know, those are sort of struggles that anyone goes through except for Sakatori. It's sort of uh, on an amplified level. But um, I think it is very relatable in that sense. It's, it's, um, there's something very real about what he's going through. Acting alone, you sort of create the space for yourself, whereas when you're with others, there's a lot of reaction that happens, and, and what the other person is doing will, in a very large way, dictate what you end up doing. I, I'm not sure what to say. I need to tell you that I just wanted you to be my dad. What would you say to future Derek? Ooh. Ooh, future Derek, if you're watching this, you're doing great. I'm proud of you. You've come a long way since now. <laughs> and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. When I think about a scene, mostly what I think of is where's the boundary line of what's accomplishable in the time that we have and uh, the space that we have. So when we made the first film, we came here and we chose this location and now we're returning again. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about how that makes you feel to sort of come back to such a personal place. Sakatori. Greeting! Franco. Congrats! You made it to lunchtime. So once you clock out, you've got 30 minutes, okay? So enjoy your lunch, but remember, when you come back, you can be sensational! had some really cool Christmas lights here and so in the first film for Franco when he's contemplating life there's, there's a sense of hope but such a dark sense of hope because people are dying in this building at multiple like multiple times a year and and so while you're contemplating life and knowing what's going on here I felt it would really add to the the pain of uh, Franco and then for Teddy like having that father-son relationship here meeting to ask for money for his chemotherapy is really troublesome. Okay. Hey, Dad, what's this all about? Teddy, listen. I know what you must think of me. I don't think you do. I might not have much time left. What? I'm dying. Cancer. Broke. Lymph nodes. If I don't start treatment next week, I might miss my window. Okay, so... So, I don't exactly have the income right now to do this. You? Richie Rich? I find that hard to believe. When I was a kid at 11, I had leukemia and I was here, and my grandfather had lung cancer, and we were on the same floor getting treatments together for a couple months, and he passed away, and I lived. And so, like, that to me, like, uh, captures this moment altogether. All that emotion, all that life, death, um, sacrifice um, really, really helps enhance the kind of mood that we have. You can tell the stories based on all of the surrounding. I remember some of my worst times here in Buffalo and the skyline and just the, the natural architecture of it really captured that atmosphere and it's beautiful and scary at the same time. Having Sakatori go through this crisis, um, am I a good father or not? really enhances that nightmarish um, kind of feel that we were going for. You can always donate to cancer research uh, here at Roswell Park because um, we need hope. We need to beat this thing called cancer and uh, you know it's one day at a time and it's all coming together. Today, I, mean, I think there's one more day. It's good. Should I leave my shoes on? Or? Yeah, you can leave them on. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. I prefer them off. I think I we are going to be, walk. we're going to be going out back, so. Oh! Yeah, you already them on. Cool yeah, Johnny. Right, so Jeez. Ready. All the time. Is this it? Is this the last scene? Can you give me some cell phone light on him? Right now? Uh, yeah. And here we go. Hey, boss. Uh, hold on, Derek. You're really far out. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Am I starting? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Hey, boss, I'm uh, gonna make the drop. I'm sorry. As many times as you want, okay. in as many ways as you want, right. you can just cut it. Hey, boss, I'm here to make the drop. Is everything all right? Terry, I'm here to make the drop. Okay, let me just, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Should I like open up the flannel or just am I good the way I am here? I think you look good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Especially with the um, over the vest. Oh, you want me to wait? Well, Steve's ready. Okay. I'm not excited about what I'm doing here. Pop this out and see if the uh it goes. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Well, hi. I like that. <laughs> I got Burr. it. Oh, it's the money. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get the light and Mr. the Salvatore. What I know about this project is that there's a nosy neighbor and uh I'm hoping that, that there's more to this film. I got two lines and I got to make them count. Honey the show's about to start, and I can't find the remote, and it's not going to pause it, so are you coming? I think we got ourselves some sort of FBI surveillance unit. What are you getting into? The Y-axis, so it spins. Okay. Oh, I wish that this was on the... So you so you get, like, so you could be walking forward and getting the, the gimbals turning the camera like this while, while you're going. Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, I got that. Hey. Hey. Pokemon. Um, we had... The faster yes. you can go, the more you know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. Is this behind the scenes? Are you recording? Yeah, we're making, we're making a document. He's just so difficult to work with. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Here's what we're gonna do. So you're gonna be at this window, um, right through here, and you're gonna stand like this, like so your profile, like with the camera. Oh, this. Yes. Howard, do you see this? That car has been parked there, idling for hours now. I was watching SVU this afternoon, and there was a stakeout situation. That's exactly what it looked like. A bunch of boneheads eating pizza and spilling coffee on themselves. So in Alabama. I mean, classic rock stations, they're what they are. They are what they are. always like the same 40 motherfucking songs. They cannot, so they're like, all right, let's have it. The catalog is massive. We're going to play five songs. That's all you get. But like the songs that they have, like, or like on Gulf Coast radio, were so fucking bad. Like, some, like, cherry pie. We're gonna start with you outside the store. And we're probably gonna have you count to like five. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna, I'll, I'll act out drinking from you. So okay, yes, 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 please do. You got your jacket on. Mm -hmm. Come in. Five. Right? Now, what's the door behind you so you're still facing forward? Back up kind of slowly and the script. You just say, he yelled at me and told me to go away. Okay. And then you say, so, oh, booby. Oh, booby. <laughs> okay, start your count. No luck. He yelled at me and told me to go. Ah, oh, booby. Come here. I feel, like, I feel like I could be productive here. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Nice, a duck. Would you like to get interviewed? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. You and then I need somebody to talk about Joni. Never recording.
caught her at some of the right moments, and then other times we almost caught her but missed it, and she never repeated it. Uh, bring your glass with you. Oh, you already have a glass of your She shows up in the mood she's in dictates her character. She picks who she is. She's pretty relaxed, mm -hmm. but to me, she's a symbol of our adaptability. Uh, what would you want to say to future branch Leah? <laughs> Slow down, don't do so much. No, I, I'm probably involved in like 10 things if I'm watching this right now. And I think that's fine as long as there's capacity for it. But um, I really hope that Franco, one, two, and three, work together as a feature length film. Because that's been the goal from the beginning. And uh, doing this in, during the holidays is not easy. As no, it's not. No. So it's. Uh, that's that's the goal. I want to get there. After you turn back this way, turning around and peeking out the front window. Of events like I turn on the TV, I look at it, and then I get up. Witch doctory type things. I think you're talking. So I'll talk to him. Yep. Okay. So I'll do my part. <laughs> I want Tim and Eric with that. Racing me back here. I, <laughs> I literally. What type of car?